everybody, thanks for tuning in to D News today. I'm Trace. I'm here at Land's End. It's at the very edge of San Francisco, and it's a beautiful place to come and see whales breaching or watch seals. But if you want to see wildlife up close, you have to go 120 miles south to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So that's where we're headed, and we're going to show you some incredible things. The California coast is one of the most vibrant locations in the world for marine research and conservation efforts. Spanning 840 miles, this stretch of the coast facing the Pacific Ocean has become home to numerous ocean research institutions such as the Monterey Bay Aquarium. The researchers inside are constantly looking forward, utilizing technology and new research techniques to study and protect the ocean and the people that depend on it. The aquarium is located along Cannery Row in Monterey, California, named for the numerous sardine canneries which operated here from the mid-1800s until the 1970s. A portal to the local wildlife and ecosystems, its world-acclaimed live exhibits have a mission to inspire ocean conservation. You are standing next to the world's first ever live kelp forest exhibit, which moves constantly to allow the kelp to survive inside the aquarium. We got a rare view of how they do this. Now you're standing above the kelp forest exhibit. Just to your left, you'll notice a pendulum-like device. That device is actually forcing water up and down along a chamber, sending pulses into the exhibit to simulate the ebb and flow of the ocean. It's one thing to see it from the surface, but underwater you get a real feel for the movement of the ocean. Look around and you'll notice leopard sharks, rockfishes, giant kelp, and may even spot a juvenile giant sea bass. Across the aquarium is the open sea exhibit. Its 1.2 million gallons of water is home to marine species that are more common beyond our coastline in the featureless open ocean. Each species in the open sea exhibit requires a specific diet and slightly higher temperature waters to replicate their natural environment. This exhibit houses yellowfin tuna, bonito, scalloped hammerheads, pelagic rays, and more than 30,000 sardines, a nod to the cannery's past. If you look down, you will see a massive green sea turtle weighing around 300 pounds. Smaller fish, such as these lookdowns, thrive in a much smaller exhibit. These fish swim all day and night because they don't sleep like land animals. Instead, they lower their metabolism to rest rather than slipping into a dormant state like you and me. Another reason they never stop is they need to move to breathe. You may even catch a quick glimpse of one of the lookdown's gills as they zip past you. Their gills gather oxygen collected from all the seawater flowing through their mouths, allowing them to breathe. You are now surrounded by sea nettle jellyfish. Normally, if you were this close, you'd feel a slight stingy sensation. The stingers are on the tentacles trailing behind the jellyfish and would feel painful if touched, but not nearly as much as, say, a bee sting. As the bell of the jellyfish pulses, it can move slowly through the water, creating water currents that help it gather passing food. As large plankton, jellies actually rely heavily on ocean currents to move them for longer distances. All of these exhibits are made possible by marine researchers, animal caregivers, expert divers, and enthusiastic volunteers who, like millions of humans before them, have fallen in love with the sea. Guys, this place is incredible. I've never been able to go behind the scenes in exhibits like that. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I obviously did. But now, let's head back up to San Francisco. The Monterey Bay Aquarium, like other aquarium and marine research institutions around the world, constantly tinker with methods and technology to study and protect marine wildlife. In fact, the future of ocean conservation is propelled forward with technological innovations. From autonomous ships, which will limit ocean pollution, to the automation and sustainable practice of fish farming. Each step along the way will benefit from marine researchers considering the new possible.